Welcome to this module about nonlinear transformations using samples. This module is one out of three in a group where the two others describe how to make these transformations using Taylor series expansions and how to use the methods derived in those two these two modules to perform parameter estimation. All movies in this group share the same example, so you will feel familiar when watching them. Nonlinear transformations, NLT for short, of a stochastic variable is a useful tool for example when making parameter estimation. The problem is formulated as follows. Given a stochastic variable u with mean mu u and covariance p u, determine the stochastic properties of the variable z, which is the function g of this uh, variable u. We are looking for the mean mu z and the covariance pz of the resulting variable z. Often we denote both the input and the output at Gaussians, but this is not necessarily true. The sample-based transformation methods all share the same basic idea, which is rather straightforward. We start with some initial knowledge about the variable u. Uh, the mean, uh, the cross here, and the covariance, which is the circle. We then select a number of points in different ways, depending on which model method we use. And these are then transformed from the U domain to the Z domain. Afterwards, these are combined and the mean and the covariance is uh, computed, as you can see, see here. The first method that we will study that deals with this is Monte Carlo transformations. Uh, the idea in Monte Carlo transformation is to pick a large number of random samples from the distribution of u and then transform them using the function g and then compute the sample mean and the sample covariance based on these properties. These are all familiar expressions from statistical theory. We'll use an example to illustrate how this is done. This is the same example as in the other clips in this uh, series. We'll look at the radar setup where we measure the distance r and the bearing phi to the target. The nice thing with the radar setup is it's possible to invert the measurement function h given these equations here. Hence, if we have a measurement y, we can compute the position the target is in using the equations here. The interesting problem in this case is what is the distribution of x hat? That is the transformation of the measurement uh, using the inverse measurement model h inverse. To illustrate the Monte Carlo method, we will take a number of measurements in the range bearing domain and transform them to the Cartesian domain. As visible here on the left, where the blue dots represent measurements from the left radar and the green dots measurements from the right radar. Uh, notice the banana shape that comes from having rather good range measurements but poor bearing. The code used to generate this figure in Signal and Systems a toolbox in MATLAB is given to the right. Given the samples, we can now compute the mean and covariance of the resulting distributions. This is indicated by the blue ellipsoid for the left radar measurements and the green ellipsoid for the right radar. Notice that we, we, we lose the banana shape and that we have to compensate for this by making the distribution rather wide. The code for making this simulation is given to the left. It's a good idea to play around in system and signals toolbox to get the feeling for the problem formulation. Note there is only three lines in this case associated with um, the transformation and the fusing of the estimates, which gives the, the red result. And the rest is only there for 
illustrational purposes. The second method that we'll discuss in this module is the uncentered transform. It's from the 1990s. Instead of using a large number of random samples as in a Monte Carlo transformation, in this case, we choose a, a small number of sigma points. One in the middle of the distribution in the mean and one in each principal direction of the covariance ellipsoid. Together with these samples, to be able to use fewer of them, we have a weight. The weight is given by these expressions. We will discuss the different parameters in the next slide. Once we have these sigma points, they are transformed using the function g. And afterwards, the mean mu z is computed as a weighted average of the sigma points. And p z, the covariance, is computed as the weighted covariance of the sigma points. A number of parameters are necessary to construct sigma points, as indicated on the previous slide. Alpha, which is a first uh, spread parameter, uh, is suggested to be quite small, which makes the sigma points appear close to the center of the distribution. It's beta, which compensates for the kind of distributions involved. It has been shown that beta equals two is optimal for Gaussian distributions. And most people use beta equals two all the time. Kappa is a secondary scaling. It's usually set to zero. Lambda is then a function of these parameters. It can be noted that when kappa is equal to zero, nu plus lambda becomes alpha squared times nu. That is, this is exactly the scaling we use to move the sigma points out of the mean of the distribution. It should also be noted that the, the weight uh, sums up to one for the weights used for the mean, whereas it's adds up to slightly more for the weights used for the covariance computations. This is to make sure that the covariance turns out to be positive. It should also be noted that the weights are not probabilities in the sense that they can have values outside of the region zero to one and often do for the center plot. Now let's look at the application of the uncentered transform to the radar application. To the left here, we have the range bearing domain with the measurement from the left and the right sensor respectively. We see how the sigma points are used to indicate or span the covariance ellipsoids. And we also see the sigma points after the transformation to the Cartesian space. And how we now use these points to compute covariance ellipsoids. And this is the matching MATLAB code used in SIGSYS to do this. Again, note that there's not that many lines of code needed to do the actual transformations, but that there's a few more lines of code necessary to illustrate the results. I strongly encourage you to play around with MATLAB and these methods to see how they actually work. That gives you a lot of insights that are valuable. Let's summarize. We have looked at nonlinear transformations of stochastic variables. That is the problem of approximating the mean and covariance of Z, which is a function G of a variable U that we know the mean and covariance of. To do this using sample-based methods, involves selecting samples to represent u, propagate this through a nonlinearity, and then analyze the result. This can be done either using Monte Carlo transformation, where a large number of random samples are used, or using the uncentered transform, which relies on a number of deterministically chosen points to well represent the distribution. Read more about this in section 3.4.2 and 3.4.4 in the textbook.